Hey, welcome back at Flow Motion with this motion tracking tutorial, which is actually part two of our three episode series. So if you haven't watched the first one, check it out and if you like it, just click the subscribe button because that always helps. So in this second part of the motion tracking tutorial series, we will concentrate on Mocha and its powerful planar tracker. And as many of you maybe don't know, Mocha is part of After Effects, so the whole tracking system in a standard version. And you can open the Mocha Planar Tracker within the After Effects application. First let's take a look at the footage that I've prepared for the tracking. This is a graffiti wall, which is of course pretty planar, and we want to add a graffiti somewhere over here and make it stick to the wall. And for that Mocha is just the perfect choice because that's exactly what Mocha does. And for the sake of this let's just maybe start it at the 4 second mark. I hit B for begin and let's just drag this a few, like 10 seconds and hit N for end. Right click on that bar and trim comp to work area. Now we only have to deal with that part. So if you want to jump directly to the tracking, you would have to skip the next four to five minutes because now I'm quickly showing you how I would create a really realistic looking graffiti to the wall. So at first I'm looking for the perfect point in time and you see that it now starts at the four second mark and ends at 14 seconds. But let's just change that, that we start at zero. So we go to the composition settings and start time code, just type in zero and hit OK. And now everything's back to normal. So let's find a point in time where everything is clearly visible. That's about the four second mark. Just think of a situation where you maybe pan into the wall and pan out so it's not visible during the whole time span so you would have to find a point in time where you want to place your object. Let's grab the text tool and I found this nice looking graffiti font and just type in motion tracking and just make it way bigger and just play with the settings here maybe also work on the spacing a little bit Just randomize this. Okay, now let's position this somewhere where we want to have it. And right here in the middle looks nice for me. And now we want to get kind of the vanishing point of the wall. And just roughly do that with a busy warp. So what I'm doing is I just bring the outline of the composition somehow to match with the line of the wall. Just like so. Now I want to distort the image a little bit that it sits better on the wall. So I will take the wall as a source for the displacement. As we are on a movie clip, I'm duplicating this once again. Call this our displacement map and just freeze it. For that, I click with the right mouse button, go to time, freeze frame. As you see, when I'm soloing this, it's frozen. Perfect. So now let's go to our motion tracking and also add a displacement map to it. And for the displacement map layer, the source of our displacement, let's take the displacement map that we just created, so the still image of the wall, and we want to work with the brightness because we have like darker parts and brighter parts, so let's go to the luminance for horizontal and vertical and now let's check out the horizontal at first 
when I'm dragging this left or right you see where there are darker parts the pixels get bent around it and we do the same for the vertical displacement until we find something that we really like and I like what we have here but when we watch the other graffitis that are already in there we see that the brighter parts of the stones are overlaying or the color already dripped off on parts that maybe have already fallen apart from the wall so to do that I'll duplicate the displacement map and call this bright wall parts and now I solo this and I just wanna see the brighter parts of the wall and I can do that with an extraction and this is basically all the color information we have a little bit of dark areas which is maybe the black parts and then we have a lot in the gray zone and and then a lot in the brighter areas so we wanna separate just checking the checkerboard so you can see we have an alpha here and I can also feather this and we only want to concentrate on some of the really bright parts maybe now let's unsolo this to see what we are actually doing so here we have our motion tracking and now we just want to find a nice spot yes something like this really looks nice and we could still bring the transparency of that layer down so we can reveal a bit more of our layers and as a last step let's now tint our text what I am normally doing for something like that I just pick a color that already exists in our scene and then I have the brightness unit saturation values and I can just look for another color that looks interesting and go down with the transparency just like so so but now let's start with the tracking in part one of this motion tracking series we've learned about the tracker in After Effects and this is something we could also do here we could click on our wall footage go to track motion and this time we have a track type as a perspective corner pin so this would bring up for markers for us and we could find four features and we could tr then try to track them and once again we create a new null object by hitting control alt shift y and select this as our target and then we could try if this works but you can already see here that it gets a bit jittery and this could work for many cases and you can find tweak your track after that but you're just tracking four points so what Mocha is actually doing is it would track everything that's in the area between your defined search region and of course this will leave us with a way better result let's just undo the tracking and track this in Mocha. So we click on our wall footage and go to animation track in Mocha for After Effects and this will open up Mocha and as far as I know this is the only way you can open Mocha within After Effects. So it automatically creates a project name, a location so I hit OK. And here we still see the whole of our clip but the red brackets mark the point in time that we have defined in our After Effects comp. So now this is pretty easy. We just have to create this search region or the tracking region and we can do that with this X spline layer tool. Just click on it and when I'm seeing this right we have our text somewhere around here and just click on the right mouse button to close. Now we want to define how many percentage of the pixels we use for the tracking and when you make like this nice circles around your number 
you can increase that and I always tend to go something about 80 because the higher the number the more accurate it gets but it also slows down the system so what I'm always doing then is I click on this planar surface icon and I once again try to mimic where the text should be and then I show the grids because the grid depends on the planar surface so when I'm setting this in a right way I can already check while tracking if everything sticks and that's already everything you have to do here you have the tracking tab like you have it in After Effects and you can track one frame forward or track forwards now let's just do Mocha track forward and you can already see that this is sticking pretty nice to the footage and at the moment you're seeing this in real time so maybe two frames per second so I'll just skip this okay we are done it took about four minutes to track it and I can click the play button now to see the result and this is looking pretty good so let's export this for that you just go to the export tracking data button and at first you have several options to choose you have corner pin and transform data and as we wanna add this with position scale and rotation we choose this one but it should already be there by default now you can save it and when you save it it stores it into a text file and you can just open that text file select everything and copy it from there or you click the copy to clipboard button back in After Effects let's again create a new null object go to the first frame and go to edit paste and when we scrub through this now we have a null object that sticks to the wall perfect and it's important to do that at the first frame because otherwise you get an offset in tracking and everything will look messed up so back in action let's go to the marker we set here because that's the point in time where our motion tracking should be and now once again just use the pick whip and connect it to the null object and you see that the motion tracking is sticking but the edges are doing crazy stuff and this is because our displacement map as well as the bright parts of the wall are frozen and therefore let's just quickly get rid of the pick whip again just choose none and now let's pre-compose the wall the text and our displacement map and call this graffiti hit ok now we're going to parent it again and this is what we were looking for let's also enable motion blur there we have it that is how easy it is to track a planar surface with mocha for after effects so if you like what you've learned so far in episode 1 and 2 of the tracking series then just click on the subscribe button so I get the chance to do more of those tutorials and tutorial series for you and I hope we see us in part 3, where we will learn something about 3D motion tracking within After Effects. 